Can anybody name that sound? Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. Today we are going to be working on this beautiful 2001 Jeep Cherokee XJ. I just lifted this thing for my buddy Tommy, but unfortunately now it has a rod knock. Yes, that unmistakable clunking sound. It sounds like somebody playing drums on a Home Depot bucket at the corner. Yes, that sound, and unfortunately that sound is 4.0 death. That is the connecting rods wiggling off the crankshaft. So what we're gonna do today, in this video, anyway, is we're gonna be taking out this 4.0, and we're gonna be replacing it with another 4.0. So today's video is 4.0 engine swap and a 2001 Jeep Cherokee XJ, and I'm gonna start by breaking down this whole upper end of the motor. I'm gonna take off the header panel over here so I have a nice clear alley to pull a motor and put one in. So I'm gonna start the breaking down. Let's do this, guys. All right, guys, I must have taken apart 100 XJs on this channel, so I'm not gonna go through step by step on how to disassemble this, um, but I'm gonna just take off the battery, that's number one, take off the air box, then start unplugging things. Uh, I'm not gonna disconnect the AC lines if I can help it. I'm just gonna try to move everything to the side, open up all the area as best I can in here, move the wires, hold everything back. Uh, of course, I'm gonna take off the header panel because this is nice and painted, and I'm just gonna put this up pull it out and uh, I'm just gonna buzz through this thing as fast as I can and I'll uh, talk about it uh, while I do this so um, all right let's go to narration mode so again the main objective is to swap this motor without disconnecting the AC lines Tommy just paid to have the AC dialed in for the summer so I'm not gonna disconnect them if I could help it so the battery's out now I'm just moving along the header panel Popping off those 10 millimeter bolts. Don't forget the two header panel bolts that are behind the headlights. And then we could take off the air box to get some more room in there. And then the header panel is out. Now we're removing the cables on top of the intake and just about everything has been a 10 millimeter so far. Uh, disconnecting the upper radiator hoses right here. Now I'm unbolting the radiator support bracket. Don't forget your bucket or catch basin. Then you remove this lower radiator hose. Fluids are gonna go everywhere. And with the lower radiator hose out of the way, I'm disconnecting the trans lines to separate this condenser out away from the body. All right guys, here we go, progress report. We're about an hour into it. I got everything off the front, the header panel. We got the radiator hanging down with the AC condenser still attached. Everything's into a, a bucket so we don't have uh, antifreeze leaking all over the place. Let's see, I'm gonna take off the battery tray so I can move the AC compressor in this area. This way the AC system is still pressurized. Not gonna wanna detach that. Don't want all that Freon gas going into the atmosphere and it's also a pain in the butt. Well, it's a pain in the butt for me. All right, I just gave everything a good power washing before I move on to taking apart the front of this engine. Uh, one thing, guys, a lot of people want to put their nuts and bolts in uh, baggies and label them. Uh, I like to just put them back where they go. I find it much easier to get everything back together, and it's uh, more time saving. So that's what I do. Put your bolts back. It's, it's quicker. Uh, all right, let's go. So I'm breaking the tension free with a socket. Then I'm going to go ahead and zip them all out with a little impact and carefully move over my AC compressor to the side. Now I can access all these nuts that stick this AC bracket to the block. Some of them are kind of tricky to get to. I highly recommend investing in a gear wrench set. It makes this job much easier. And as I mentioned before, you're gonna wanna thread all your bolts back into where you got them from. It saves a lot of time. And while I'm down here, just removing some ground wire. And moving on to the power steering pump, three 13 millimeter bolts will get this right off. And over here, the water pump, four 13 millimeter bolts to get that pulley off. And that will give you access to the other four 13 millimeter bolts that hold on the water pump itself. Two more 13s for the thermostat. Four more 10 millimeters to get off the fuel rail. Don't forget to unplug all your injector wires. Be careful, they're brittle, don't break it. Hot wipe. Then over here on the passenger side, just wrestling with a bunch of wires, disconnecting the starter and the power distribution center. You gotta remember guys that these wires are at least 20 years old. You don't wanna break them. And to speed up the process, I had myself help myself. 
All right, guys, here we are about four hours in. I disconnected just about everything from right here at the top end. Once again, I got the radiator dangling down into a bucket. I actually drained my fluids into uh, old coolant containers. Took off this whole front end. And I went ahead and I moved the AC compressor into the battery area. I did not disconnect anything AC-wise. AC condenser is still attached. So uh, no Freon gases in the atmosphere, and I won't have to recharge it when I'm done. Hopefully, I'll be able to maneuver this engine out over this little spike, but if not, I could always take off this uh, mounting bracket. No biggie. Uh, what else did I do? Uh, all the wiring on this side, I took it off from the uh, alternator to the starter, all the ground connections, and yes, I left all the nuts right where they go on these little grounds. Keep everything nice and neat. Um, what else? Uh, moved all the wiring up and over, disconnected the fuel rail and the injectors, got that wiring up and out. Uh, we got the throttle body right here. We're going to reuse this. We're going to reuse this uh, intake, but we're going to put that on the new engine. Um, what else is done here? Yeah, we got the, uh, what are the systems that I not disconnect? Uh, power steering. There we go. Power steering system. And here we have the... Um, Good old PCM. This is under a garbage bag, nice and protected because I sprayed some engine degreaser and I power washed this whole area. I cleaned my working space real good down there. Let this dry up and then we're going to go underneath and start unbolting some stuff from the bottom. I guess we'll start with the starter. That's a good place to start. And then uh, we'll start unbolting the bell housing bolts that attach the transmission to the engine. Um, yeah. All right, now I'm under the Jeep and I'm just gonna go around checking from front to back things like this, like this transline attachment that's on the bottom of the oil pan. Let's see, there's a couple more on this side. Working my way back there, making sure there's nothing else attached. Like this exhaust pipe, I'm gonna have to cut this. It is a welded solid. Uh, and I'm gonna take off the starter right there too. Then I'll start working on all these bolts around the bell housing. <sighs> This baby is a 13 millimeter. All right, onto some of these bigger bolts. There we go. Those big suckers are 18 millimeter on both sides. I'm gonna try to get a 15 millimeter on this upper, this upper starter bolt. There we go. And the starter is out. Woohoo! Don't drop it on your face. Mine was 11 millimeter. Good chance yours is too. Don't forget to disconnect the O2 sensors at the bottom. Once I get this little guy off right here, then I'll be able to hopefully slide out this uh, stuff in the face. I'll slide off this little protector plate, and then I can access the good stuff under there. Look at that. Peekaboo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This bolt's a nightmare. The collector pipe always blocks that for some reason. I don't know why they just didn't put the nut here. Put the nut here, put the bolt there, and it slides back. <sighs> Crazy, right? Oh, there she is. There we go. Now we're looking inside the bell housing. We're gonna have to remove these 15 millimeter bolts, nice and deep like in there. But before I do that, I'm gonna work my way around that side just to make sure that that crankshaft positioning sensor is not in the way here we are underneath the driver's side of the engine back by the bell housing these brackets right here i have to take off to drop the cable to get to these bolts up top here and look at this we also have a sneaky o2 sensor cable right here this is going to be in the way and we're going to have to disconnect that so i just took off the two 13 millimeter bolts uh, this also holds the crankshaft positioning sensor connector and also that other, where'd it go? Can't find it. 
O2 sensor plug. I think it's dangling somewhere over here. O2 sensor plug. Yeah, no biggie. Uh, so those are disconnected. Uh, this is dropped down. Now I can get this bolt and continue our work around this bell housing. Right now there's only about seven bolts left holding this engine on. One of which is tucked way in here. Don't know if you can even see it. It's covered in goo. It's a uh, E12 bolt. All right, there's one right there. There's the other one. So that's two. There's two E12 bolts sitting right on the top. Uh, they are a B to get to. Let me tell you what. This is what it looks like. There's less goo on this one too. This one is an E12. It is basically a reverse Torx. And over here, this one is an E12. This is the passenger side E Torx. And I'm putting all my strength on this tiny little thing. And it's kind of a pain in the ass to get to. But I broke it free. This is a great behind the scenes though, for sure. Oh, yeah. Nobody sees you doing this kind of stuff. No, I try to make it G-rated. <laughs> it took me all night to get out these two bolts. What are they, you ask? These are the E12, the reverse Torx bits, the top two bolts on the 4.0 that attach the engine to the bell housing. And uh, what I did was, well, you can see this 2x4 here. Well, I put padding on it. Sorry for the sun. Padded it up, straddled it, reached down inside on the passenger side and had to get that with this little guy. I went ahead and I bent my E12. There we go. Just enough to get back there. And then I had to hold this in place with a pry bar. I actually pushed this against the firewall, kind of like this, prying off the firewall, keeping pressure. Oops, on the back of that wrench. Trust me, that happened a bunch of times too. So that was the passenger side. I had to go ahead and attack the driver's side like you would the crank shaft position sensor. I used this bad boy. We got about two feet of extensions with the little wobble right here, this universal, and this E12. So, uh, <laughs> got them both. Many, many hours for just two bolts. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna start today. Actually, I just started, as you can see from the goo. Um, I took out the last 13 millimeter bolt. Another one that I didn't see, because it too is covered in goo. And now all I gotta do is do the five or four, four or five torque converter bolts. You get that from under here. There we go, that is a torque converter bolt. That bolts the torque converter to the pressure plate or the flywheel, in this case, uh, a pressure plate. It is an automatic, so yes, we will uh, go ahead and take those off. I can only get to this one right now. Then want to take that off, I will rotate the crank at the harmonic balancer. There we go. Yay, the torque converter bolts. These bolts are just a pain in the butt. Not so much in the removal process, it's the reinstallation process that's a pain. <sighs> Got it. When you put them back in, you're supposed to torque them down to about 30 foot-pounds of torque. But the problem I found was there is not enough room to get a torque wrench in there. Because I could only fit a small 15 millimeter gear wrench in there, I never feel like I tighten them down enough. So for me, I always use the red Loctite to get these torque converter bolts in. You don't want this pressure plate wobbling around on your torque converter when you're doing 70 down the highway. That's it. Four. All right. All right. Getting ready to pull this bird boy. There is just one more problem. Can anybody see that? The exhaust is a... Uh, hardwired to the car. So since this is a nice neat pipe, I think I'm just gonna make a nice neat cut right down the middle. And uh, this way I could throw a collar on it and splice it, slide it back over and then weld them again. Yeah. All right, guys, here we go. I think we got everything disconnected. Finally, uh, only thing holding her on 
are the two motor mounts, one on either side, of course. And I got my engine puller. And here we go, on the passenger side, we got a nice heavy duty chain coming down here with uh, holes big enough to fit the 3 8 bolt, 3 8 by 16, I do believe. Now this is threaded in right to the bracket for the AC compressor, nice and solid. We also got an extra one on that bottom hole, just in case. Easy peasy, threaded them in, no problem. And coming around over here, on the driver's side, we got some more chain, of course. What you do is find the right length you want. Nothing too tight, not too sloppy. Go ahead and put both links up at the top. So you can thread your bolt in on the side. This is again a 14 millimeter head, just like all the rest of these. And uh, 3 8 goes right in, 3 8 by 16. And there you have it, a nice, beautiful engine hoist setup. Should be good to go. All right, let's give it a shot. You can see I got a couple more little pieces of bracketry that are interfering. We got this one on this side. It's kind of annoying. And we come over here and we got the trans dipstick mount interfering right there. No biggie. Just uh, be mindful so you don't bend anything too severe. Look, we got some separation going on. Very cool, very cool. And would you look at that? I missed one O2 sensor. So just make sure you take your time go little by little and it'll come all right guys there we go this bad boy looks pretty much free and clear we can take a look now we can see uh See that it's out, there's no more wires or tubes or hoses or anything holding this on. I believe she is free to go. There we go, we can see the teeth here on the pressure plate that the starter engages. And these notches right here, these are the notches that your crankshaft positioning sensors read. And there you go down at the bottom, there is your torque converter in the transmission. That's what the pressure plate and the flywheel bolt to. Pretty good so far guys. There you go guys, and if she's giving you any guff, feel free to loop one of the uh, pieces of the exhaust manifold on with this pry bar, crank it in there, and uh, give it a couple tugs. Boom, come on out. 